Next, GNU Linux is not Unix, but it is a hell of an open re-implementation of an operating system originally designed for the PDP-11. All I mean is GNU Linux takes the ideas of standard input and output, as well as inter-program piping and a hierarchy of files and folders from Unix, but this time using a GPL license to allow users and developers their software freedoms. On the Librem 5, the GUI stack uses Wayland and a shiny UI called Fosh built by Purism. But press Ctrl Alt F1 and you'll be looking at software that largely resembles code from the 80s and early 90s. Instead of a mainframe, I have this general purpose phone. Instead of Wayland and this nice looking UI, I want to use this terminal. Instead of interfacing with a keyboard, I want to interface with the touchscreen. Looking at projects that already exist, we have this nice looking keyboard program. After building a baker's dozen debs, I managed to get this keyboard running. Nice. For whatever reason, I can't get this to respond to anything except Xterm style mouse input, which is not available as far as I know in this basic terminal. Past experience has taught me to stay far away from end curses. It's just not as hackable as I'd like it to be. So instead, I built this small library called UICon. This is a basic tool that offers keyboard and mouse input and exposes commands to move the cursor and write in any color. First up is getting basic touch input in the console. Looking around, GPM, the ancient general purpose mouse, was looking like a good option. I did try using this, and it does report touch data as if it was a mouse, but the issue is when you touch two different parts of the screen, it randomly jumps. So GPM is not going to work for me. Next, I tested accessing the screen with the dev device directly. I could read events from Python, but turning this into usable touch coordinates was not going to work. Just to see what command line solutions there might be, I dug into command line tools and found EV test. This spits out clear text X and Y coordinates when you touch the screen as well as the type of event. This feels very old school. Let's pipe that data into a Python process and rip out what we need. With this really hacky touch input working, I need a way of drawing one or more terminals as well as a way to pass keyboard and touch data onto those terminals. As far as I know, the closest project is something like Dmux, which is just not built for what I'm trying to do. So I built Compositerm, cause it's a compositor for terminal windows. This sucker is really where the magic's at. It lets you open a terminal of any size at any place, running any command within the bigger terminal. I can start a new bash session or two, or use it to render small parts of a new terminal desktop environment. This is kind of the first version of what I'm calling Multish, a multi-shell touchscreen driven interface for non-X11 or Wayland terminals. The top menu is its own terminal, as well as the bottom menu. All open terminals show up as apps on the bottom and can be minimized and unminimized. This bottom bar is just a program reading composite terms running file as well as using its hook commands. Tapping start will open a menu terminal. For now, the program just waits for a mouse event and starts bash, but I'm hoping to add a calls app, basic messaging app, and simple things like a calculator and tic-tac-toe. The on-screen keyboard can be toggled by clicking the top bar. This is yet another terminal. It also shows up in the menu bar, which would benefit from some nice auto refresh. With a terminal open, you need to make sure it's in focus. This is done when you tap any app except the keyboard. You can see it still sends click data to every app, but it really shouldn't do that. With a new terminal in focus, the on-screen keyboard can send basic characters, as well as the enter key. The other keys still need some work. Keyboard events are passed to whatever terminal is in focus, which makes using an external keyboard an option. If anyone takes a liking to this project, or if you want to dig into how it works, you can find all the source code online under the GPL3 license. Thanks for watching. Bye.